Hi guys, it's Mark Zipri, Mr. Sci-Fi, also known as Mark Zipri, Space Command. And it is a hot day in West Hollywood, and I'm here to share with you my opinions of two new shows, one of which I like very much, and the other of which is um, Take Your Chances. And uh, meantime, we're ramping up for Space Command, building sets, building creatures, um, editing, doing VFX, all sorts of stuff. Working full time, and um, it's really exciting. Now, last month we raised enough money to do all the stuff we're doing now. And if I sell 27 shares in Space Command at 7,500 bucks each, we'll be able to shoot the rest of it in October, the rest of the second two hour story, Forgiveness, and gather our crew, put them on our alien hibernation ship sets, just rock and roll. So, if you've been interested in buying shares in Space Command, that will help enormously. You can call me, they're 7,500 bucks each. You can call me at 323-363-1259 or email markzickery at gmail.com. Be happy to answer questions, send you paperwork. But that is not what we're here to talk about today. We're here talking about The Boys on Amazon Prime and Another Life on Netflix. Now, Another Life stars Katie Sackhoff, gets her back in a spaceship. I thought she was terrific in Battlestar Galactica, really loved her in that. Uh, this is less of a good show. Um, we'll get to it in a minute, but let me talk about The Boys first, which I really liked. I watched the entire first season. Uh, it's eight episode first season. Uh, stars Carl Urban, whom you've seen as Dr. McCoy in J.J. Abrams' Star Trek movies, and uh, he's played a lot of other roles, including in Lord of the Rings. Really a wonderful actor, and he's very, very good here. And the other lead is the son of Meg Ryan and Dennis Quaid, who are movie stars of a bygone era. <laughs> and this is what their genes look like when they're combined. And, he's qu and the lead is quite nice, quite good. And uh, there's a lot of other great actors. It takes place in an alternate uh, world where superheroes are real, but although they pretend to be good guys for the most part, uh, they, are co they are commodities. They are basically being utilized by a corporation to generate billions of dollars, if not more. And they're also looking to increase their power in the world in terms of, you know, political power, etc. And it's, it's really good. The actor who plays Homelander, the lead superhero, superhero, sort of a Superman kind of character, is really wonderful. And it, uh, it also has a wonderful actress playing Starlight, who's sort of the young initiate into what's called the Seven, sort of a version of the Avengers. And it's commenting on sort of the Marvel Universe in a, in a big way. <laughs> and also commenting on the religious right and, uh, the, and the extreme right wing of American politics and all sorts of stuff. And I thought it did it very well. It's created by Eric Kripke and run by him. And uh, he's a talented man. And, uh, and I look forward to what they're going to do in the second season. But, and it's an interesting balancing act now that shows, you know, tell of one big story over the course of a season and then go into the next season. Because the ones that do it badly, they end on a cliffhanger and don't resolve anything. And the ones that do it well resolve enough so you feel you've been given a beginning, middle, and an end with an arrow toward the next season. And that's what they did in The Boys, and I was grateful for it. And I, um, I like the visual design. I think the visual effects are terrific. I think the writing is very solid. Just really enjoyed it, and I can recommend it wholeheartedly to you. Now, as, as for Another Life, the Katie Sackhoff series, that's more problematical. I mean, it's nice to have Katie Sackhoff back in space on a spaceship. She plays a spaceship captain. Basic premise is an alien um, probe lands on Earth, and we send a spaceship out to where it apparently it came from to contact the aliens and discern their intentions. And that's fine. That's all well and good. Not a problem. But another life has Prometheus syndrome. And by that I mean you have a spaceship crew who should be the top of their fields, geniuses, committed, you know, really solid, solid citizens and, and you know, know how to work with, work with others and instead you have these incredibly bitchy difficult people who don't seem to know the first thing about anything basically and uh you know so in prometheus it's sort of like you know the guy's a gazillionaire and this is the best he can hire what where's his hr department you know these these incredibly uh uh cranky and uh difficult people who are thrown together and they're supposed to be the best at what they do well in this it's it's 20 somethings and they're all, you know, sort of like uh, cantankerous and gossipy, and it's just kind of like. And there's one character who's sort of like Hurley from Lost, and it's just. And 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 for a long time, the ship is being battered, and people are being thrown about, and they're not even sitting down. And the minimal you'd think is that they would have seats that have, you know, seat belts. <laughs> and and only later, later in the first episode, do they actually strap in when they should have been doing that, you know, from the beginning. And. Uh, 
you know, it's just got a lot of goofy stuff, and and the parents and their and their little kid are written very um, uh, flatly and stereotypically. So you get a feeling that the writer doesn't have kids, or if he does, you know, uh, should listen to them more, get a sense of how they talk, because uh, it's just kind of head writing, and you know, it's just people thrown together and having conflict where in reality, you know, if you were going to send a ship to an alien species to make first contact, you'd be damn certain that the people you sent were, um, uh, first of all, brilliant, but secondly, um, calm, you know, had a, had a calm personality and wouldn't, wouldn't represent our species badly or do anything half-cocked. And uh, so, you know, that, and that's where, um, uh, the, 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 you know, the film that Denis Villeneuve did, uh, you know, was very, very good about Alien First Contact, and uh, this one is much weaker. So I may watch some more episodes of it, but it, it takes, you know, it takes a lot, because it just, you know, you just kind of, uh, your uh, suspension of disbelief sort of goes out the window. Um, the pro and, you know, and again, for all of us who watch science fiction uh, and love it, the, the level at which we say, I'm, I'm out of here, the, where you can't believe it, believe the construct anymore, differs from person to person. So for instance, one of my favorite, favorite films is Independence Day, but for many people, the being able to infect an alien ship with a human computer virus, they just kind of said, oh no, give me a break, and, and bailed. Whereas for me, I can, I can swallow that one. I know it's ridiculous, but I still love that movie. Whereas here, there are many, many things where I just cannot, can, cannot take the ride. So. Um, so that's sort of it for now in terms of these two shows, but, um, you know, Boys is doing a great job, visual effects, performance, everything, and uh, I recommend it. Now, don't confuse it with a show called Our Boys, which is about Israeli uh, covert agents, <laughs> otherwise you'll get a very, very different show. But um, that's it for now, so uh, much to come soon. I'll be updating you about Space Command, I'll be doing my History of Science Fiction film continuing, and uh, that's it for now. Take care, guys. Bye.